Here we go. My friends, today we have 10 things you didn't know about the classic video game GoldenEye 007. And no, these are hopefully not somewhat obvious or commonly known clips that the majority of people who played GoldenEye might know, like the fact there are these glass beakers on the top of the ventilation duct in facility, or the fact that there's a double AR-33 hiding inside these nesting boxes on caverns. Today we have very rare facts or strange situations and occurrences so unusual that you've almost certainly never seen these before. So buckle in baby, and here we go. But before we get into all that, a huge thanks to today's sponsor, Royal Match, a Match 3 puzzle mobile game. It's completely free and does not even require internet to play, which is great given all the recent global outages. In Royal Match, you help the king build and renovate his royal castle to its former glory and save him from the danger in his nightmares by solving puzzles. Royal Match is great for chilling out and relaxing, I enjoyed it while catching up on some YouTube videos and live streams, and with cute characters in a colorful world of fun puzzles, Royal Match is perfect for you to escape the crazy stress of the world and unwind. There are no in-game ads, you can fully focus and enjoy the game, so check it out baby, with the link in my description, or this QR code on screen, and have some relaxing fun downloading and playing Royal Match. Thanks, Royal Match, and onwards with the rest of our video. Here's a cool fact that I find really interesting to get us started. And it really shows the depths of knowledge and dedication that the developers had when making Goldeneye. There are very few places in the game where you can take environmental damage. I mean, aside from explosions and fire, like really one. And that is indeed on facility when you can break open these gas canisters flooding the facility with toxic gas. In this case, you will slowly but surely start to take damage. But here's the interesting thing. When you take toxic gas damage, you take that damage directly and it doesn't affect your body armor. This makes sense, of course, because why would your body armor protect you from toxic gas? But it is interesting that the developers had enough foresight to program this into the game properly. If you look at, say, Super Mario 64, everyone knows the glitch where if you're low on health and then you go for a quick swim, your health bar and oxygen bar are the same thing, so surfacing quickly replenishes your entire health. And so these sorts of health issues weren't exactly something that video game developers in the 90s always had fleshed out. But it's cool to see that the GoldenEye devs did exactly do that. Kudos to them. So this one is a very strange oddity that a few actually mentioned in my last video on unusual places in GoldenEye. The game is known for being almost comical in what can explode when you shoot it. Chairs blow up a little, these models of vehicles on Surface One blow up a lot, and of course wooden boxes blow up, which we make use of by self-boosting through them on a couple of levels. However, silver crates do not blow up. Here are some very famous silver crates on Aztec. They do not blow up. The silver crates on Silo, they do not blow up. This pile of silver crates on Dam, they definitely do not blow up. However, believe it or not, there is one exception to this rule. This pair of silver crates at the end of the Dam level, for some reason, do explode. There are two of them on the furthest pier of Dam, and they both explode. The reason for this is not something I'm sure of, to be honest. I don't know if anyone really knows but it's true and it's amazing to see. Why there are only two silver crates in the entire game that explode is simply a bizarre fact of Goldeneye. Here's one of the most bizarre video clips of Goldeneye and something that you almost definitely didn't know or ever thought about before. 
At the end of the control stage, Trevelyan taunts you by calling you slow and then closes his elevator door. You cannot open it, and thus you must use a separate elevator to finish the mission, where you then carry on to caverns and cradle and you chase him to the game's grand finale. Okay, so Trevelyan closes the lift door on control, stays still, and never opens it. You can never enter this lift, even with turbo mode and slow animation on, and the door always remains locked. Trevelyan doesn't open it, you can't open it, can anyone on the stage open this locked lift door? Well, in this video from 2011, from Speed Gamer and GoldenEye Madman Trent H, we might just find out. He turns on a few specific cheats and settings. All guns, slow animation, invincibility, infinite ammo, and sets enemy health to full 1000%. Natalia already can take a lot of damage on Control Double O Agent, and so with a thousand percent health, this gives Natalia an incredible amount of health. And by shooting her in the leg with the Clob, which only does 60% of the damage of most other weapons in the game, you can back her up very, very far. You can quickly swap to the Golden PP7 to pass away guards on the stage who might be interrupting this process, interfering with you backing her up as far as possible, and, when you're backing up Natalia, if you shoot her just as she's turning at a certain angle in the middle of her recovery animations, you can slowly but surely edit the path on which she backs up. Over the course of 40 minutes, Trent traverses Natalia shot by shot through the control stage towards Trevelyan's elevator, eventually getting Natalia into the lift with Trev. This is truly amazing, and I would dare say something that no one watching this video has ever done before. Unless, of course, you're Trent yourself watching this video. Trevelyan then notices Bond, closes the lift, yet Natalia is able to open the lift herself and run away from Trevelyan back to her usual points and spawn points on the stage. So this answers the age-old question, I suppose. Who can open this lift on control? Well, Natalia can. All right, if you turn on the walkthrough doors game shark cheat, you can just enter this lift without the 40 minutes of trickery, and you can see that Trevelyan is always there and never despawns. But you cannot even unlock this door from the inside. You do see, however, that guards do see you and follow you in, and they too can unlock the door from either side. I imagine Boris would also be able to unlock this door, but he has much less health than Natalia, and so he can't survive quite as many shots. I tested it myself and found he survives about 60 clob shots with 1000% health, so this might barely be enough to get him into the lift with Trev, but I'll let some other intrepid gamer try that for themselves. Interestingly, as one final footnote on this entry, shooting Natalia to back her up and then turning her at specific angles of her recovery animation would later be used in the world record speedrun strategy. We now back her up at a specific angle to this point where she can escape to her despawn point about a second faster than normal when we leave the control level and complete the mission. So little did Trent know in 2011 that his mucking around on control actually showed us something that would become useful later. And perhaps if people paid a little more attention to this troll video, the world record strategy may have been discovered sooner. Speaking of the walkthrough doors game shark cheat, here's an interesting fact on the Depot stage. Depot is one of the simplest agent difficulty stages in the game, with only one objective, locate Trevelyan's train. This is considered complete the moment the train door opens, whether you open it yourself, or a guard opens it like they do when we perform the iconic train shot, one of the game's earliest tricks and time saves. And so the level really just amounts to run to the end, but not exactly. 
You see if we have on walk through doors and simply run to the end, even if we get to the same unloading zone inside the train, the mission fails. This is because the trigger for Objective A, locating Trevelyan's train, depends on opening the door to the train. It's just such a bizarre and counterintuitive twist to the objective that just running in there plain fails the mission. Of course, the door can be closed or closing when you're entering the train, so long as you've opened it first, the objective will complete and the mission will complete. But it is a very quirky door, and unless you've messed around with walkthrough doors yourself, you've probably never encountered this. Certainly strange. So here's a cute little clip from Mamel. And yes, that is his username. It's pretty well known that you can get back into the vents at the start of facility, with this being one of the most common secrets in the game dating back to the 90s. However, did you know, guards can chase you up here too. Especially the infinitely spawning guards from after the Ormov encounter will actively seek your position no matter where you are on the level, and so if you manage to get back up into the vents, they might just chase you up there too. I can just see some strange creepypasta being written about this scenario. It's pretty common knowledge that Odd Job is the smallest character in multiplayer, and thus choosing Odd Job in those 90s multiplayer matches was usually either banned, frowned upon, or considered cheating. While you do not encounter Odd Job in the solo player game, despite many 90s rumors, he is indeed the most controversial multiplayer character due to his diminutive stature and thus smaller hitbox. However, did you know that some characters are pretty much just as small as Oddjob? In particular, the female civilian, scientist, and moonraker. This image from fellow GoldenEye content creator Grasslu really just shows how small these female characters are, and you probably wouldn't have gotten too much flack for choosing these players in your multiplayer matches instead of Oddjob. So here's an old item that existed somewhere between Rare Glitch, Urban Legend, and Unexplained Phenomenon that I want to look back into. Back in the 2000s, if you browsed around various early gaming websites like Game FAQs, or just personal websites of fans of the game like the legendary Death Star GoldenEye site, you probably came across the story of the faceless guards on Surface One. The idea was that, if you spawned the Arctic Commandos wearing blue camo, which can be done by either trying to enter the bunker from this door, or by destroying the communications console failing Objective A, eventually they will start spawning without faces, or messed up faces, or wearing sunglasses, or just other bizarre glitchy textures. I tried this for a couple hours and had absolutely no luck, but I made a forum post to the Elite community who had heard similar legends over the years. Pretty quickly, a couple of the guys got the glitch to work. With renewed spirit that this was simply not some old urban legend and could be performed on console with only in-game cheats and no external ROM hacking, I tried it myself and also got it to work. You can see one particularly common texture is this blue stripe across where the eyes should be, which I suppose is where the sunglasses legend came from many years ago. This stage is an interesting one as there are two distinct groups of spawning guards, the Siberian Special Forces in the grey-white snowsuits and the Arctic Commandos in blue camo. For reasons that are still not entirely understood, the level gets incredibly glitchy when both sets of guards are spawning. You can see some glitches in the ammo display textures, in the appearance of thrown mines, the R-aimer appears as a snowy grid, and other similar anomalies all start happening after a few cycles of arctic commando spawns. Anyways, it's just something super bizarre that unless you were a mega fan of Goldeneye back in the day who actively browsed the internet for rumors and legends, you likely did not know. So 
So here's a very strange situation that I had never considered until I saw a perfect ace video doing it. On Facility Secret and Double Agent, you must encounter Dr. Doak to receive the door decoder as this is an objective. You can make noise to attract guards to open the locked door, which otherwise requires the decoder. So keep this in mind, although if you were to do this and not encounter Doak, you would still fail because, of course, it's an objective. When we encounter Doak on World Record Speedruns, he's in this position where we get so close to him that he begins talking to us immediately. Once he starts talking, he'll give us the decoder a few seconds later, no matter how far away we are. And usually we start running down this hallway and then pause and we get the decoder. However, if we start to encounter Doak, but don't get too close to him, he'll follow our course throughout the rest of the stage. By keeping enough of a distance between you and Doak, you can lure Doak to follow you all the way to the end of the stage or anywhere else on the facility you might want to go. This can result in the very rare case where you can complete the Doak objective after the Trevelyan encounter, something that is ordinarily far from the intended way of playing the game. I pulled off this run where I began talking to Doak amidst all the chaos of the Ormov and Trevelyan encounter, and I found it all very amusing. So I hope you enjoyed this strange and silly entry in this video of strange things you probably didn't know in GoldenEye. Oh, he was right there. I, I, I don't. I think he just got stuck on the. Oh, here he goes. He's up here. Insane. Where's he going? He's just running. Because I think his spawn point's like over here somewhere. Or his despawn point. He's just running up here. Here's one that I legitimately did not know about until last year, but admittedly, perhaps you may have already been aware. On Bunker 2, when you use the Watch Magnet Attract to obtain the cell key which lets you out of your jail cell, the key is actually physically placed on the wall opposite your cell. You can see it right here. Pressing Z to use the Watch Magnet Attract literally pulls it towards you and into your possession. I had no idea until after the Arlene cell warp was discovered, escaping the cell without the key, but you still need to pick it up from the wall yourself in order to unlock the final door on the stage. This door being locked the first time I ever encountered it really stunned me too. It's all a very strange layout to the level. You know, why you need your cell key to unlock the final door in the bunker is just bizarre. Furthermore, you can also visibly see the throwing knives from this sort of, you know, whatever vent or drainage pool it's supposed to be, and if you shoot the knives, they'll pop up one by one onto the floor level where you can pick them up. Of course, the more common way is to gather all five by just using the Watch Magnet Attract. And here's another interesting and well-designed little quirk on Bunker 2. The way the level is canonically programmed, you're supposed to go over to this side of your cell and have a conversation introducing you to Natalia. Then, when she wonders how you're going to escape, Bond comes up with a cunning plan where he fakes having a stomachache. The guard doesn't buy it at all, but this is supposed to guide you towards taking out your watch magnet attract, which both makes the sound of a grumbling stomach and activates the powerful magnet, which pulls the key off the jail cell wall, allowing you to escape. But let's say you do things a little out of order by using cheats to load a weapon and shoot the guard. Well, in this case, Bond will still have the same interaction with Natalia, introducing himself and all, but he won't go on with the whole faked stomach ache arc. It's interesting that the devs programmed this into the game, accounting for the possibility that you might pass away the guard from within the cell, rather than a more typical order of escaping and then slapping him to his earthly coil. 
Of course, it would be very silly for Bond to have a conversation about a stomachache with a non-existent guard, but it's still cool to see that the possibility of him being eliminated first has all been accounted for. So the Aztec glass door has a strange property which you've almost certainly never encountered. There are two conventional ways to get the glass door open. One of course is to battle Jaws, get his smart keycard, and unlock the glass door. But the other way is, of course, the various strategies for tricking guards into opening it for you. But is there any other way? Well, what about just passing right through the glass door? Believe it or not, there are a couple ways that this can actually happen. One method is obviously using the walk through doors cheat we've been discussing throughout this video, but there is actually another method called the pinball or super boost strategy. You see, by pausing repeatedly while taking damage, the boosts you're taking from guards can stack, building you up to an insane amount of speed, which could allow you to warp typically unwarpable objects. This includes, believe it or not, the Aztec glass door. This can be used in a sort of experimental side league called Pinball Mode, where we turn enemy accuracy up to 100% and enemy damage to 0%, so we just get pinged around all day like a pinball in the stage. This could also plausibly be possible on the Agent difficulty as well, but you need to take at least 8 to 10 hits for enough super boost speed to warp the door, which would make surviving the run very difficult, if not impossible. And it is just straight up unsurvivable on Secret and Double O Agent. You cannot get enough boosts to get a super boost without passing away. But let's say you even do get through the glass door. We're still faced with a sort of problem. The door is still locked from the inside. However, this problem solves itself because in any case where we somehow manage to get ourselves on the opposite side of the glass door without it being opened, guards will simply see bond through the glass door and immediately run towards you, opening it. I mean, it all makes logical sense, but it's an extremely rare situation that I'm sure virtually no one watching this has ever found themselves in. My friends, will anyone ever pull off a pinball super boost world record on Aztec Agent? Probably not. Well, that's that, baby. 10 strange facts, unusual situations, and things you likely did not know about in GoldenEye 007. Or, I mean, it was probably way more than 10 things, all things considered. But hey, how many of these did you know? Do you know any similar facts, things, or weird situations that I didn't mention in this video? I would love to hear it all in the comments. Thanks for watching, my friends. I hope you enjoyed. Stay true, and I'll see you in the next stream or video.